Hey everybody, I've got a little bit of a problem on my hands right now because we ran out of mulch here on our homestead and mulch is a huge part of our garden success. Here on our homestead, we use leaf mulch because that's what we have the most of and it's free. I simply drive around my yard with a lawnmower every fall, put the leaves into a big pile or directly onto our garden to help prepare for the next year. One of the reasons why our garden is so productive is because we put leaf mulch on the soil. Now what I'm going to do is show you that if you don't have big trees like we have, if you don't have mass amounts of leaves that you're going to collect every single fall to put onto your garden once it's mulched up, you want to use leaf mulch, not just leaves that you rake up. You want to break that down somehow. If you don't have access to that, I'm going to show you what you can do with grass. What I have to do now is go around with my lawnmower and cut the grass like I normally would and like you probably normally do too. So even if you have a push mower in town or your neighbor's got one, I would highly recommend collecting grass either from your neighbor's yard or your friend's yard and just taking it and putting that directly onto your raised beds or your in-ground beds using them as mulch just like I do with leaves. Let's take a look. So we have a whole bunch of grass over there. I prefer using a wheelbarrow when it comes to this. Just a little easier to work with and you've got less mess than if you were to take these bags and just start dumping them all over your garden. Pretty damp, right? It's green yet. So you do want to take this and finely spread this out. If this is spread out, so maybe about an inch thick or even less, that eventually, not only will that turn brown, but it's going to break down nicely in your garden. Just like leaf mulch or straw or any other kind of mulch that's already brown, it's going to do the same thing. So a little side note right here, this is a volunteer potato. We had our broccoli here. We harvested all of our broccoli, but we're gonna replant broccoli elsewhere for a fall crop later on. So this basically is empty or was empty until I put a whole bunch of seed potatoes down right here. I found seed potatoes that I liked and I decided to put them here. And if you're new to gardening or you wanna change the way you're doing potatoes, I highly recommend just putting leaves on top of your potatoes, literally, just put the potatoes on soil. Instead of digging them down in the ground a foot, six inches, some people do 24 inches in the ground, which is crazy. Instead of doing all that work and digging, all you have to do is set them on the soil, put some straw or some kind of organic material on top of them. We use leaf mulch and just let the potatoes grow. That way you don't have to dig them out. And that's exactly what we've done here. We did it back in my chicken run area over there when we ran out of space. And we did that in a couple other spots in the garden and we love this method. The problem with this method is that as the potatoes grow, you're gonna notice you need to add more mulch, otherwise some of them are gonna be exposed to sunlight and eventually turn green, which means you cannot eat them. If you were to look here, this entire bed has potato plants coming out of. And some are exposed, but there's a lot more coming. And once they all grow up, you're gonna to wanna to keep adding mulch, which is another reason why we're adding mulch to this garden right now. We also added about 16 square feet of potatoes over here. Of course, we do our typical grow bags. We have six of them right there. And this space became available at four by four, 16 square feet, where we put potatoes in here. So again, instead of just dumping this all over and spreading it out and hoping it works out, I recommend just lightly placing this across the top. And you don't need much. This is gonna go a long way. Just put enough over it so it covers it and it gives this time to dry. If you think about how people make hay, they let it dry for several days before they actually pick it up and make it into hay, hay bales and so on and so forth. So it's just a light covering, not much. Any mulch is better than none. We have maybe an inch or less of grass clippings on here. Once we get a nice sunny day, this is gonna turn brown or at least close to it because it's so thin. All of these potatoes should grow up and you saw a lot of them before popping through and this should end up being a really healthy potato bed right here. It's been three days since I put the grass down. Let's go take a look in the garden and see what it looks like. It looks like it's all pretty well dried up. If you look here, it's a little moist underneath. There's a potato plant coming through, but not too bad. You can see it's green down here, but browning on the top right up here. And that's the idea. If you ever feel like it's too damp underneath right here, just take off a little bit. That'll allow some air and some dryness to happen, especially if you have a nice sunny day. I filled in some other areas here, marigolds by our tomato and basil and zucchini and 
celery, onions, potatoes, lots of stuff growing in this bed. And this is really drying nicely too. This is what you want. When a nice dry grassy mulch after a few days of drying. Over here is another section of potatoes, about four by four. And when I put the grass on here, it was damp, just like it was everywhere else. If you look here, it's about a half inch of grass mulch, but it's really starting to brown nicely. It's got that nice brown color, which I am a little surprised considering how much rain we received yesterday. It was a gloomy, rainy day, but it's dry on top like you want, with this nice dried out brown. Then here, see how dark that is? That is what we're looking for with mulch. And that doesn't need to be grass mulch, that can be any mulch, but considering grass is a free resource, it's everywhere. It doesn't really matter what kind of grass, as long as it's some kind of lawn that you're cutting. This is gonna benefit you and your crops. And to me, it's a no-brainer. Everybody should be mulching their garden to the best of their ability for their benefit and the benefit of their crops. I really appreciate you watching this video. If you watch these two videos over here, they can also benefit you if you're into the self-reliant homesteading lifestyle. Thanks for watching. See you next time.